I think the, I think possessions kind of weigh you down. Then they're kind of an attack vector. You know, people say, "Hey, billionaire, you got all this stuff." I'm like, well, I, now I don't have stuff. Now what's, what are you going to do? If you're getting rid of a lot of your stuff, chances are you're going to have a family member who's concerned about your mental health. I think it's a natural reaction. For my parents' generation, they dreamed of the mansion of their own, the three-car garage, and everything to go along with it. For people like this, wealth and possession are closely linked. They see it as a coping strategy for having low income, even if they don't even know what your income is. While minimalism can help you thrive even when you're making very little, I don't think the two concepts of wealth and minimalism are in any way contradictory. And even if you do end up making a lot, this doesn't automatically mean you should start surrounding yourself with a bunch of possessions. The first thing I want you to realize is that if you're here on YouTube watching this video, you're wealthier than anyone was just two decades ago. Okay, maybe not in terms of paper wealth, but just 20 years ago, nobody, not even royalty, had access to things like a device in your pocket that has access to nearly all the world's knowledge or the ability to have pretty much anything delivered to you in a single day, all without interacting with a single person. With things like smartphones, ride-hailing apps, and one-day shipping, all of us have something I like to call access. It doesn't matter how much money is in your bank account, nobody had this, not even the ultra-wealthy just a few decades ago. It's what we do with that access that's important. We can use these tools to start a business or create great art and share it with the world. Or we can use the same tools to get into diversions and antisocial behavior. Choose wisely, because it's the difference between turning that access into paper wealth or squandering it. What are your major goals? Maybe you want to live in a city abroad, or land a high-paying job at one of the major tech companies, or maybe you even want to drive a supercar. I know that these are all things that I want to do, and I'm sure you have similar lofty ambitions. Well, I don't think that any of these things are contradictory with minimalism, even the supercar. We all want to have nice things, and if we want that thing and we can afford it, we are more than welcome and open to be able to go buy that thing. But if we start to accumulate too many things, those things turn into liabilities. Filling your house with a bunch of stuff means that you need to buy a bigger house and get a heftier insurance policy. And when it comes time to move, it's going to be more expensive and more time consuming. When it's harder to move, it's harder to pursue the opportunities that are going to be best for us. And ultimately, in the long term, we're going to settle down in a house filled with stuff that we don't even care about, unfulfilled because we were never able to pursue our dreams. When you own just the things you need, plus maybe a few more things that you really like and enjoy, you're able to enjoy those things without sacrificing a life of freedom and flexibility. I want to highlight a few people who are known to be wealthy yet who are also incorporating some aspects of minimalism into their lives. Elon Musk is selling all his homes in favor of just renting something. The CEO of Twitter and Square, Jack Dorsey, only uses an iPhone to run his business, not a computer and not an iPad. The most woke, empty house millionaire, Alex Becker, lives in a nice high-rise apartment, but he also has almost no furniture, nothing to distract him from running his business and his YouTube channel. And YouTuber Graham Stephan makes over a million dollars per year, yet he will pretty much only spend money on something if it's a good investment, such as a house that he can rent out as a duplex. So these are people who are known to be relatively wealthy, but they don't squander all their wealth on stuff. And if something were to happen where their income or wealth would drastically go down, I'm sure they would be just as comfortable living like that because they're already used to a relatively minimal lifestyle. And to me, each of these examples are inspiring because they show us that we can strive to achieve more without having more. So with that said, thanks so much, and I hope you have a great day.